Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 9th of September. India to raise target for restoring degraded land, says Prime Minister Modi. Indian Army says terrorists planning to launch attacks in South India. An Afghan government urges Taliban to hold direct talks. Now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated a high-level segment of the UN conference to combat desertification on Monday in northern Uttar Pradesh province. Addressing the 14th Conference of Parties to United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, Modi said it is time to say goodbye to single-use plastic. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday stressed on climate change and other environmental issues as he addressed the 14th Conference of Parties or COP14 of United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification or UNCCD in Greater Noida City. The UN meet is aimed to identify mutually viable solutions to the growing challenges of desertification, land degradation and drought. As many as 196 countries are participating in the conference. Prime Minister Modi spoke about plans to combat the phenomenon that is threat to the climate and called upon the leadership of UNCCD to conceive a global water action agenda which is central to the land degradation neutrality strategy. He said that it's time to say goodbye to single-use plastic. From this forum, I would like to announce that India would raise its ambition of the total area that would be restored from its land degradation status from 21 million hectares to 26 million hectares between now and 2030. United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification was adopted in Paris on June 17, 1994 and was ratified by 196 countries and the European Union. India ratified the UNCCD Convention in 1996. The Indian Army on Monday said it had received inputs on a possible terror attack in South India, adding that some abandoned boats were found recovered from Sir Creek, the tidal estuary on the border of India and Pakistan. India's Southern Army Commander Lieutenant General S.K. Saini on Monday said the Army had received inputs on a possible terror attack in South India. He said that abandoned boats were found from Sir Creek, the tidal estuary on the border of India and Pakistan. Keeping in mind the enhanced threat perception, Saini said that several measures have been undertaken for capacity building and capability development in the area of Sir Creek. We have got many inputs that there may be a terrorist attack in the southern part of India and the peninsular India. There have been some boats also which have been recovered, the abandoned boats in the area of Sir Creek. We have undertaken measures for capacity building and capability development in the area of the Sir Creek, keeping in mind the enhanced threat perception. Meanwhile, the Indian Army on Monday released a video exposing an infiltration bid by Pakistan's Border Action Team, or BAT, to carry out a strike in Karen sector on the line of control. Heavy casualties were inflicted on the BAT and five possible intruders were killed as the bodies were spotted close to the post on LOC where the action took place last month. The Indian Army had asked its Pakistani counterparts to approach them by raising white flags and take possession of bodies which are lying on the Indian side of the LOC. 
In news from Afghanistan, the Afghan government on Sunday announced its position on the U.S. President Donald Trump's decision to call off peace negotiations with the Taliban. The government has urged the Taliban to stop violence and hold direct talks with them at a time when the group and the U.S. negotiators had agreed in principle on a peace agreement. Afghan government has urged the Taliban to end violence and talk directly to them after the U.S. President Donald Trump announced that he had cancelled a planned meeting with the insurgent uh, group the over a draft peace accord. Addressing a news conference in Afghan capital Kabul on Sunday, President Ashraf Ghani spokesperson Siddiq Siddiqui said the government strongly believes in a process that can be led and owned by them and the Afghan people. The remarks came as the U.S. President Donald Trump in a series of tweets on Saturday announced that he has called off peace negotiations with the Taliban after the group admitted to an attack in Kabul that killed 12 people, including one U.S. soldier. <coughs> Trump was set to meet senior Taliban leaders and separately Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on Sunday. However, he cancelled the meeting and called off the negotiations. We strongly believe in a process that can be led and owned by the Afghan government and Afghan people, and that will lead us to um, um, a dignified peace, a sustainable peace, and a peace in which Taliban will not kill Afghans anymore. So that's what we think. U.S. diplomats have been talking with Taliban representatives in different rounds in Doha and UAE and had agreed in principle on a deal according to the U.S. Special Envoy Zalmi Khalilzad. However, as negotiators reached the draft accord last week, Taliban fighters were launching assaults on Afghanistan's northern city of Kunduz and Pule Khumri. Frustrated by the lackadaisical attitude of the authorities in Gilgit, Baltistan, doctors gave a 10-day ultimatum to authorities to accept their demands or else they will start protest and strike across the region. The doctors for months have been demanding regularization of the contract jobs and bringing the salaries at par with doctors of other provinces. Young doctors from two different groups in Gilgit, Baltistan recently held a press conference against the authorities for exploiting them and delaying regularization of the contractual doctors. Young Doctors Association and Pakistan Medical Association Gilgit, Baltistan gave a 10-day ultimatum to the government of Gilgit, Baltistan to accept their demands, otherwise the doctors will start protest and strike across the region. They also demanded increase in number of doctors in hospitals in order to decrease burden of existing doctors. The protesting doctors demanded to bring the salaries and other incentives of doctors in Gilgit Baldistan at par with other provinces. Our proposal is that in four shifts, in three shifts, in the medical officer is not going to be medical ward, surgical ward, पीड़ित वार्ड और गानी वार्ड में और सीएमओस से दो रखे जाएं डे टाइम पे क्योंकि मरीजों का बर्डन बहुत ज्यादा होता है और उस सवाले से कंसल्टेंट डॉक्टर्स की बहुत कमी है और कंसल्टेंट डॉक्टर डे एंगल क्यों नहीं आते सैलरी की डिफिनेंसी और दूसरी मराद नहीं है तो The protesters also demanded approval of policy regarding special training and specialization of doctors in Gilgit Baltistan in news from Sri Lanka, at least 17 people were injured when two elephants at a Sri Lankan street pageant this weekend went on a rampage. The injured are receiving treatment at the local hospitals. At least 17 people were injured when two elephants at a Sri Lankan street pageant went on a rampage on Saturday, local media reported. TV footage of the parade showed one of the elephants bolting from a group of people before trampling bystanders as it ran down the road. Starting from a 600-year-old Buddhist temple, the annual street pageant or Perahera sees dancers and elaborately decorated elephants parade through the streets of Kote. The injured were immediately rushed to nearby hospital. According to local media reports, the injured are receiving treatment at different local hospitals. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar on Monday said that Singapore has become a fulcrum for India's policies. During his three-day visit, he was scheduled to meet the country's top leadership to further strengthen bilateral ties. Indian Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar on Monday said that Singapore has become a fulcrum for India's political, strategic as well as economic policies. 
While speaking at the next phase business and innovation summit in Singapore, Jay Shankar said India has a very robust defense relationship with Singapore and that both the countries have just completed 25 years of uninterrupted naval exercises. He added India at first started bilateral relationship with Singapore but now it has grown much bigger. In political strategic as well as in the economic commercial uh, areas it's very clear that singapore has become a fulcrum for india's policies east of india uh, and uh, that uh, today uh, what what started off as a bilateral relationship is something which has grown very much bigger jay shankar also visited a startup and innovation exhibition at the summit with his Singaporean counterpart Vivian Balakrishnan around 60 startups from India were also part of the exhibition the indian foreign minister was also scheduled to co-chair the 6th meeting of the joint ministerial committee with balakrishnan and meet singapore's top leadership during his 3 day visit A 74-year-old woman in India's southern Andhra Pradesh province recently gave birth to twins through the IVF treatment. Describing it as a rare case, the doctor said the twin girls and their mother are reportedly doing well. A septuagenarian woman from Guntur district of India's southern Andhra Pradesh province recently gave birth to twins through in vitro fertilization or IVF method. 74-year-old Yaramatti Mangayamma got married in 1962 to Raja Rao and could never conceive. The couple visited various hospitals and doctors but nothing turned out in their favor. Mangayamma's long wait ended after over 50 years as she conceived in the first attempt through IVF. In the first attempt she was pregnant and uh, that was really amazing for us. And from that time we formed into teams. So we formed uh, three teams. one to look after her pregnancy and one team to look after her nutritional needs and another team to look after her general health Mangayamma's mother who lives along with them expressed happiness and said they together will look after the children and there are other people also to support them Doctors have said that even at an age of 74 Mangayamma is healthy with a good hemoglobin level and has no major health issues like blood pressure or diabetes The twins were also reportedly doing well. The 8th edition of the Ladakh Marathon held in India's Leh city witnessed over 5000 participants from 26 countries. The annual event is also known as the world's highest marathon as it includes a race on a terrain over 11000 feet above the main sea level. Around 5500 participants from across India and 26 different countries took part in the 8th edition of the Ladakh Marathon that concluded on Sunday in Leh city of India's Ladakh region. The 72 km marathon Khardungla challenge which began on Friday was followed by events held in three categories: full marathon of 42 km, half marathon of 21 km and run for fun of 7 km. The Khardungla challenge is held on the world's highest motorable road Khardungla on the Leh Nubra road and is considered as the toughest race organized in such a terrain. A great participation for all the all the runners from different parts of the world. We had 26 uh, uh, participants from 26 countries and over uh, participation from 27 states of India. Uh, we had we had close to 5500 people participating in this marathon and it has gone really smoothly and uh, this is the first time that i have come to ladakh uh, the target was to do the kardungla challenge the day before yesterday and uh, it was one of the biggest challenge and i was successfully able to complete that and after that i did the half marathon today at ladakh it's an awesome place and awesome uh, program here after becoming a full member of association of international marathons and distance races in 2015 the ladakh marathon has earned a place on the global marathon calendar enabling ladakh to foster and promote distance running ladakh that was last month announced as a union territory by the indian government is also home to indus river rafting the highest river rafting point in the world and numerous himalayan treks 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.